generally for most people or at least in language if not in experience. For most people the word orgasm always means sexuality, but that's not the fact. Essentially, uh, an orgasm means an, inter an internalized ecstatic state. It is being used generally in language with relation to sexuality because unfortunately uh, for most people they have known no other experience bigger than the physical intensity of sexuality probably. Most people have not even known anything more than that. So they have started using the word orgasm for sexuality. The word orgasm means much more than that, that your whole organism has reached a certain peak. Sexuality doesn't do that. It, it gives you a certain sense of peak, but it doesn't take you to an absolute peak where every cell in your body will burst. So, it is… Uh, sexuality or sex is an inadequate activity to be described as an orgasm. It's inadequate. It is just that when physically one reaches a certain state of ecstasy, there is a limitation. But once one knows how to be orgasmic, without the need of the physicality, then it's a perpetual orgasm. In India, we have a better word for this. We call this ānanda. Ānanda is orgasmic. We described God as an orgasm. We said God is ānanda, brahmānanda. So when we say, Brahmananda, what we are saying is, what you refer to as God is an ultimate orgasm. If you are sincere enough to look at life without the conditionings of uh, the wasted religious processes, essentially the only thing that a human being is looking for is ultimate state of pleasantness. He calls it kingdom of God, he calls it heaven, he calls it whatever. Essentially he is looking for uh, an ultimate orgasm. He is not losing, looking for anything else. So God has been described as ananda or God has been described as orgasm. Orgasm is not a sufficient word. Ananda is a… is saying that thing in a much bigger way than the word orgasm says it. So in the East we called God as ānanda, ultimate orgasm is God. If you want to settle for limited things, you can try sexuality, alcohol, drug. It will only enslave you, it doesn't liberate you. Because this is not ānanda, this is just pleasure. Pleasure is always entangling. People seek pleasure essentially because joy is missing, because bliss is missing. If you are blissful, you would definitely not seek pleasure. Pleasure, isn't it so? If you are right now really blissful, would you seek pleasure? Pleasure is just a shadow of blissfulness. It can… it is never the real thing. It just gives you a shadow. But when you have not known the real thing, even a shadow will do. I am not against it. But if you do not realize the limitation of pleasure, you will get entangled in it. The, di the more and more you seek pleasure, the more and more you get entangled to the objects of pleasure. But the more and more blissful you become, the more and more you become free from everything. When you are truly blissful, nothing is needed. No food is needed, no sleep is needed, 
even life is not needed. Actually, when you're truly blissful, you're willing to die. Please see this. Only one, only that one who is constantly willing to die every moment of his life, only that one will know life. Because if you do not know how to fall into the abyss of life, you will never know the peak of life. Life is one inside the other, that's the problem. But people think one is against the other because they are using their logical mind to decipher life. Life and death are one inside the other. Are they one after another? They are not one after another, they are one inside the other, please see. And only if you fall into, willing to fall into that abyss of death, you will know the peak of life. Generally, in English language, if you are in a hopeless condition, we say, it is said in English, you are falling into your bottomless pit. Please understand this, look at the… look at the superficial nature of people's understanding. If a pit is bottomless, there is really no danger, isn't it? <laughs> it is the most wonderful thing. If something is bottomless and you fall into it, it is an eternal free fall. Only because there is a bottom, there is a problem. <laughs> Once it happened, Shankaran Pillai fell off the second floor <laughs> and he was hurt. People gathered around him and asked, did the fall hurt you? He said, you idiots, it's not the fall, it's the stopping. It's never the fall, it's always the stopping which hurts you, isn't it? <laughs>